All right, guys, so the first thing is we need to first define what even is socionomics. And to do that, let's take a look at the history. Let's go back to the roots and where it all began. In Switzerland in the year 1920, where Jung published his book, Psychological Types. Now, in that book, that's where he proposed that the foundation of the human psyche was built upon what he termed as cognitive senses, which is what we call cognitive functions, or what the MBTI people call cognitive functions, but the socionists call it information metabolism elements. So in his book, it wasn't until it was only just one chapter of the book. All right. I think it was chapter 10, if I'm not mistaken, where he actually started giving descriptions of each of the types. Now, Jung only proposed that there were eight types and each one led with the dom function. So he was only focused on the dom function. Another crucial thing that people need to understand about Jung's work is that when Jung described these uh types he described the extreme cases he described the cases when they were extremely mentally unhealthy all right so yeah now 20 years later uh c comes in the creation of the mbti instrument isabel and Catherine briggs came together took young's work built upon it and that's when the eight types turned into 16 types all right and that's where the whole concept of the auxiliary function came into be now, that was during the 1940s, during the uh, Second World War. Now, fast forward to the 1970s, and then we have the creation of socionics. All right. It was created by a Lithuanian researcher, a psychologist and economist, sorry, named Ashra. I'm not going to pronounce the second part of her name, last name. I don't know how to pronounce that, so forgive me for that, okay? But yeah, so she was a Lithuanian psychologist and economist, and she was the one who first initially proposed socionics and uh, what, what is known as Model A, which is a very crucial model, which we'll be getting to in uh, one of the upcoming videos. All right. Now, in the 1990s is when socionics was actually standardized. It was standardized by Alexander Bukolov, Viktor Galenko, Gregory Renin, after the founding of the International Institute of Socionics in Kiev, Ukraine. All right. So that's the history of socionics, and that's how it came to be. Now, let's take a look at the differences between uh, socionics and MBTI. Where do they differ? Now, socionics, like I said earlier, they don't call the what Jung called cognitive senses, cognitive functions. They instead call them information metabolism elements. It said it, it, it takes a look at how the idea is that each one of the functions, quote unquote, is the way that you it, it's a it's a it's a slice of reality that you're tuned into. Right? That's the best way to put it. Okay. A, it's unlike the MBTI, it proposes that we that every single human being uses all eight functions. Or more like seven more like seven because the polar one is the one that's basically the one we don't use but essentially eight functions all right eight cognitive functions but again remember socionics call this information metabolism elements all right that's another key distinction here where the mbti believes you can only use four and not all eight another key distinction is the lettering system socionics has a three-letter code instead of a four-letter code all right and yeah, those are some of the basic fundamental differences between socionics and MBTI. And I think the most important distinction to make here is that socionics believes in an eight function model as opposed to four. And I am aware that there, is, there are people who, in MBTI sphere or in the Western interpretation of Jung's work, like Dr. John Beebe, who also used eight function model. But John Beebe's work isn't MBTI official. All right. Like, so when you go and do a I believe if you go and do a, an actual MBTI uh, course to become a practitioner, they don't teach eight function model. They teach that everybody only uses four functions along with the letter dichotomies. All right. So I guess you could say that um, uh, John Beebe sort of did his own thing, has his own separate practice, you could say. But anyways. So now let's take a look at the information metabolism elements, what MBTI people call cognitive functions, what Jung originally called as cognitive senses. Let's define them. All right, I'm going to define them. They're the same functions in terms of the labeling, but I'm going to define them. And I do believe that uh, at the end of the day, socionics is much more accurate. I believe that both MBTI and socionics are trying to describe the same things. 
with these uh, functions or IMEs, but Socionics just did a much better job, all right? So let's break it down. Now, instead of just giving you a description and definition, let's try to break it down and make it a little bit more mathematical, okay? So let's take a look at all the extroverted functions, the T E F E S E N E. All right. What I want you guys to do is I want you guys to just isolate everything here and take a look at the E's, which is extroversion. Just take a look at that and break it down into that component, into the simplest component and understand what is an extroverted function? What does an extroverted function do? Extroverted functions are functions which are primarily concerned with accumulating, okay, or should I just say quantity, all right, enhancing quantity and accumulating more of, that's what extroverted functions do, okay, it's not that extroverted functions are the ones you see in the world, that's actually not true, because introverted functions, like for example, TI and SI, are functions that are you that you see all right this is a dichotomy called internal and external okay that's another crucial thing so for example ti is something that you can see and interact with and share with other people even though it is quote unquote introverted but the best way to put it is extroverted functions are all about enhancing increasing accumulating and increasing the quantity that's the first thing now second quantity of what well thinking all right te is all about enhancing the quantity of solve thinking as a, as a function is all about solving problems now te is all about looking for the different ways and increasing the different w number of ways that a person can solve a problem te types are all about being pragmatic versatile being able to solve a various set of problems using a various set of tools all right, thinking TE and TI is all about problem solving. All right, it's just TE approaches it differently than TI. TE is all about data, statistics, uh, research, reading books, uh, accumulating information, whether it be from books, interviews, documentaries. Again, it's looking, not gonna say looking out, it is looking to increase the quantity of and accumulate more more facts, more information, more research, more books, more interviews, more documentaries, more more ways of solving a problem, more ways of enhancing the efficiency and effectiveness, right? Now, let's take a look at FE. What is FE trying to increase the quantity of? FE wants to increase the quantity of of uh, moods, passions, emotions, emotional expressions, the vibe and the atmosphere in the room, all right? FE is all about uh, having this dynamic, sort of like a fluid way of expressing oneself and not just expressing oneself, but also getting others to express themselves and seeing the, the interplay of different vibes and moods between an individual and other people as well, all right? Now we take a look at SE. SE is all about increasing the quantity of experiences it's all about accumulating more experiences trying this trying that trying different things but it's also in nature in terms of behavior not just intent but in terms of behavior it's all about pushing and forcing things and having volition and um, being percep being uh, perceptive of space and changing things moving and just applying a lot of physical force to the environment around you to the concrete environment now let's take a look at any. What is any? Intuition. All right. Intuition is so a function all about abstractions, concepts, ideas, meaning, and implications. But it's trying to increase the quantity of. So it wants to get as many concepts as possible. It wants to adopt as many concepts, get as many different ideas as possible. Uh, idea generation is a big thing with any. All right, they're all about brainstorming and idea generating. All right, taking different concepts and not just on their own, but seeing the interplay and the connection and the different ways it can combine and create permutations with these different concepts. Another thing about any is that it's very aware of externalized potential it can see the potential of one situation and the potential of another situation 
all right? So these are the extroverted functions. Now it's important to note, the thinking functions, all of them are detached and external, all right? So the external as in you can see these functions and, and interact with them. The sensing as well, so even SI is external. You can perceive it and see it even though SI is introverted. But functions like NE and NI, these functions are not are detached and internal. So what that means is that any, whenever a person uses any or an I, or whenever they're engaged in uh, an intuition, all right, an intuitive IME, it's something you think about. It's not something you see, interact with. It's not something that's immediately perceptible by the five senses. It's just something you think about in the mind's eye, basically, all right? Now, anyways, let's go down to the introverted functions. All right, so what is what is introversion? Think of this. All right, this is the, the key word here. Extroversion is quantity. In introversion, you might you may think I'm going to say quality, but I'm going to say refinement instead. All right, which is quality, the same thing, the same idea, same concept, but it's refinement. It's all about it's all about seeing the different. For example, you're 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 out in the garden, a bunch of apple trees. All right. You want to pick the one apple tree, the tree that has the best and the freshest apples. That's how all the introverted functions basically work, essentially. So TI is all about frameworks and models. Now, I have this strange feeling that people, when they talk about frameworks and models, they don't really know what a framework or model actually is. So I'm going to give you guys an actual concrete example of a framework or model. So take Maslow's hierarchy of needs, all right? I don't know if you've seen this, but listen, let me just show you. Hierarchy of needs. This right here. Maslow's hierarchy of needs is an example of a TI framework model. Now, what is it that makes it a model? Well, unlike TE, TI is all about order, structure, okay? It's not TE. TI is the one that's all about order and structure, and it's all about um creating a model that is structured and that is logically consistent with the other okay so that's basically what ti is whenever you see a model of any sort of any kind all right that's ti like for example i think a uh, dunning kruger effect would be a great model that's a model all right that's a model of people's competency all right that's static it's not something that sh changes shifts and is dynamic, it's not dynamic, all right, but it's static, and yeah. So TI is all about refining intellectual ideas of what works and what doesn't work. TI is not looking for the multiple ways of solving a problem or the multiple tools you can use or the different amounts of books and research. It's not concerned with that. TI is concerned with establishing a coherent system of thinking, all right? And it needs to be logically uh, consistent. Like, so if this, then that. If this, then that, you know? So, yeah. If A equals B and B equals C, then A equals C. That way of thinking, all right, is TI. It's very heavily TI. Now, let's take a look at FI. What is FI? It's a feeling. It's all about what, uh, moral judgments, all right? What is a good or a bad thing to do? Having personal sentiment towards other people. FI is all about refining that, refining the emotional atmosphere, I guess you could say. See, when I say that, I mean that FI types, unlike FE types, are not so concerned with um, displaying outward emotions, passions, moods, or that of other people, or being in an environment that is uh, that, that is that consists of that. Okay, so FI is all about having your own personal sentiment, what you think is right or wrong, you as an individual personally, and then refining the uh, quality of what you think is a good or bad decision, basically. All right, and then morally, from a moral sense, it's still a decision making function. And uh, not a lot of people know this, but even, but I think Socionics knows this as well. And even some spheres in MBT, I have pointed this out. And Jung originally, when he coined, when he coined FI, he also described it this way. But FI is a very analytical function, all right, IME. It's just as analytical as TI. It's just what it's analyzing is completely different from what TI is analyzing, all right? Now let's then move on. So those were TE thinking, F. Now let's move on to SI. SI, it's all about 
refining the sensory experience because it's all about sensing it's all about what people can touch taste you know smell see all that stuff right but it's instead of accumulating experiences going out and conquering that mountain or uh, discovering new land like in a concrete sense right si is all about refining all right what is comfortable what is peaceful what is harmonious um yeah what how can we make sure that the day-to-day is running in a peaceful comfortable way without things uh falling apart basically that's si okay and then we got to ni all right as a function here intuition like i said it's all about the deep uh, deeper meaning implication but with ni instead of increasing the quantity of different ideas and concepts and i is all about refining and finding the ideas and concepts implications and meanings that is most significant to the individual in the long term all right that's the thing so ni is all about ni is all about a person's path a person's destiny not just sometimes not just about the person but also the destiny of another person or another project or an industry all right it's all about trajectory ni is called the intuition of time because ni has a special connection to time each of the functions have their own special connections but ni for ni it would be time all right ni is all about evolution development progress over time innovation as well okay how things transform over the uh, over the years all right it can be in a negative way or a positive way so yeah so then let me go and tell you guys so te names of the functions te is known as pragmatism fe is known as um i think it was mood passion se is all about volitional force space and e is all about ideas possibilities ti is all about laws frameworks fi is all about personal sentiment si is all about comfort right uh, harmony uh, in the concrete sense right and i don't mean like harmony in, in, in an emotional sense but it's mainly just si harm related harmony oceanics came in the 1970s from an economist and a psychologist named ashra she's lithuanian it was standardized in the 90s by alexander bukolo victor glenko gregory Reinen after f- the founding of the international institute of socionics in kiev ukraine socionics unlike uh unlike MBTI, believes in an eight function model and that everybody uses all eight functions and not just four. Now what MBTI people call functions, socianists call information metabolism elements or IME for short. Then we have the functions, the extroverted functions are all about increasing the quantity, whereas the introverted functions are all about refining the quality. Now one thing, last thing, is a misconception is that people tend to frame the differences between extroversion and introversion as as uh, plural versus singular but for example like ni is all about the one concept well ni is not exactly i mean it can know it can have like two three four concepts or ideas also maybe different hobbies as well but the difference is that they all need to be refined under one superordinate theme so i guess it turns the three or the four or the five into just one big one i guess you could say but yeah so yeah anyways guys this concludes this uh lecture and hope you guys found this episode useful make sure you like and subscribe all right guys so i'm back again with another lecture and in this lecture we're going to be going over model a now this is the most important aspect of socionics is to understand model a so the best way i can put it is if you're familiar with john bb's work model a you could say is the socionics version of john bb's eight function model basically all right so what this model does is it essentially places the different information metabolism elements which mbti people call functions in the specific order and it describes how each IME behaves in each slot the exact same way John Beebe did his work all right did his model now in terms of the uh, labeling for example I have the leading function I'm also going to call it the hero 
All right, so I'm also going to be translating it in terms of John Beebe. If you just so can make sure that everybody's on the same page here, but I would I would encourage you guys to also learn the uh, Socionics name for the uh, different slots. Now, this is a key distinction. All right, what John Beebe calls the slot is what Socionics calls the function. All right, so the slot that the information metabolism or not the slot the cognitive function in terms of mbti goes into in socionics is the function all right that the information metabolism element goes to, okay so whenever you think of the parent slot replace it with function the word slot replace the word slot with function all right that's very crucial that you uh, learn this so Model A was created by Ashra, all right, the Lithuanian psychologist and economist who founded uh, Socionics, and that's why it's called Model A. Now there are many other models. There are there's Model G, and I think well, some I met someone who, who created something called Model L. So the point is is that there are different offshoots of this. Although I hope the word offshoot isn't. I don't use the word offshoot to try to paint a negative image of the other models just to let you guys know that there are different variations of these models but model a is the original or what people will term as the classic socionics okay but without further ado let's just jump in right into it and let's uh take a look at the model let's take a look at the structure of this all right so let's break it down eight different cells all right eight functions representing the eight functions that we all use and depending on where the ime information metabolism is inserted in that determines your personality now each row has a specific name the first row is called the ego block all right now we're only going to be focusing on the first row in this episode uh the next episode we're going to go down to the second row okay then after that and then yeah you you get the idea that each row has a specific name each row has its own characteristics its own behavior its own purpose all right and each row has within it two functions okay so let's take a look at the uh, leading function which is what uh, john bb call the hero function all right oh and before i do that let's also pay attention to the numbering all right so we got one on the left cell then two on the right then instead of continuing the pattern of going from left to right, the pattern switches and it goes from three, which is on the right, to four on the left. There's a specific reason for this. We're going to get into that later, not in this video, but just keep that in mind. And then we've got uh, four and then we go into five again from right to left. And then, I'll set, and then we get to uh, function number six. Then we go back again to left to right, seven and then to eight. Okay. Another thing that I need to say is that um, there's a difference. I'm going to go into it in further videos later down the line, which is the difference between a valued and a strong function. But just know for now that the first two functions, the leading and the creative, all right, these functions are strong and valued. All right, now these functions are what make up the what is termed as the ego block. All right, this is essentially who you are and what you bring to the world. Okay. So let's break down. We're going to focus on the ego block in today's episode. Now, what is the ego block? The ego block is the area of conscious competence and active influence upon the world. All right. This is where you're most confident and this is where you're able to lead others and help others in. All right. These are the functions that produce a person's inner sense of I, hence why it's called the ego block and is what the individual most strongly identifies with. These functions have an almost endless amount of energy, demands appreciation for its use, and can easily be communicated to by the person to others. All right? So this is where you're strong, you're confident, you have a lot of energy in these two functions. Some people will say, well, you don't really have that much energy in your, for example, if you're an introvert, your creative is going to automatically be an extroverted function, and that because it's extrovert that you actually don't have that much energy not in model a and i would have to agree here that this is actually true that it's your your sense of energy you have a lot of energy in these top two functions all right now let's break it down and go into the leading function 
what is the leading function or what John BB and the MBTI people call the hero function. Let me zoom in here a little bit. The leading function. So in simple terms, all right, this is what determines your lifestyle and global perception of the world. The leading function is basically who you are as an individual. This is why um, Carl Jung, he said that the leading function or the hero function is the uh, function that is responsible for individuation to allow the, in the person to individuate. That's why one person, like, so if you take two NI DOMs, if you take two people of the same type, ILIs or MBTI INTJs, one INTJ's NI is going to be very different from another person, another INTJ's NI in the way that it develops. Why? Because it's the leading function that differentiates you from other people. Okay. That's what's key here. That's what that's what that's the key distinction to make when it comes to trying to identify and understand what the leading function is all about. Okay. Now, the information metabolism element that goes into this function is the information metabolism element you use in order to differentiate, in order to get that inner sense of who you actually are. All right. This function is constantly on. And it is what the individual embodies as opposed to expresses in daily life. I had some videos in the past that I made where I was comparing the differences between an INTJ and ENTJ, which is LIE versus ILI. And I remember talking about how the relationship that the ILI has with their NI is very different from the relationship that the LIE has with their NI. That the ILI embodies their NI vision of the future and where they want to go and where they want to head. They become the vision that they see in themselves and that they see in the future. Whereas the LIE doesn't do that. The LIE, as potent as their NI is, they don't identify with their insights or their visions. As right, They don't become the vision. They don't embody the things that they see. They instead use the things that they see to communicate to other people. And that's why uh, the LIE will display a lot more NI than an ILI in communication, all right? It, you're more likely to get an LIE to tell you or to talk about their individual NI insights. All right, one second. So yeah, whereas an ILI is not likely to tell you because why? Well, because they don't use that to communicate with other people. Now, I'm gonna get, that's, the, that's communication with other people and contributing to other people. That's the area of, or the domain of the creative slash parent function. Okay, so the leading function, all right, is the information metabolism in this function describes our primary state of mind and is our source of confidence. This is where you derive your sense of confidence. Now, there's a lot of overlap here between this and uh, Dr. John Beebe's model. All right, there's a lot of similarities, and which is which I find quite interesting. Now, the leading hero leading slash hero, the satisfaction is drawn from use of this function regardless of external role. And that's another key here. You like to use this function whether the world rewards you for it or not. This function is constantly on. It is who you are. It is what you embody, all right, as opposed to use in a utilitarian sense. Okay. Now, let's go on to the uh, creative or what John Beebe calls the parent function. Now, the in simple terms, this function is strong, like the leading function, but without a complete view of the world, open to integrate new information, and is flexible. Okay, so the archetype you can associate with this function is the helper. This function is the function you use to help yourself and other people, and the information metabolism element that goes inside this function is what you use to help yourself and other people. Just think helper your main channel of contribution to the world. This is a function you use to interact with and communicate to other people. And it is your main channel of connection to other people and to society as a whole, all right? Whereas the leading is all about being the assertive big boss, all right? It doesn't matter if you're a TE or SE Dom, anybody can be a big boss, but the boss, the way you, 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 you sort of embody that archetype is through your leading function, right? Even an SI DOM can be a big boss, or an FI DOM, or an I, or whichever type. The leading is extremely... Um, here's the thing. The leading is not flexible, all right? The leading of the hero function is not a flexible function. 
it takes time to change and adapt in this area. All right, you're not really open to new information as much. Whereas the creative, it's extremely flexible, open to new, uh, new information, and is willing to integrate new information that it gets. Okay? It actively expresses itself, all right? So this, is, this area is extremely expressive. This is the part you'll see a lot in, a, in an individual when they're interacting with you, gains others' attention, and is selectively displayed. All right, it's less significance is attached to its function, and when others attempt to make this function the main criteria for everything, light irritation can be experienced, all right? So, this function, you could almost say it's used sparingly, but when it's used, it's used really damn well, basically, yeah. So, here's another, here's a great example, all right? When help is needed in the IM, or information metabolism element, in this function, it is always done through the leading. For example, an SEE, which is MBTI ESFP, will try to help other people solve their FI-related problems, all right, relationships and understanding between people through a, an S, a SE perspective, making sure you know what you want and are trying to achieve it, okay? Chances to help others through this function lead to deep satisfaction and a feeling of contribution to the world. Now again, so that's really what's key here, right? So let's take this and further simplify it. Creative slash parent function, the helper, the main channel of contribution to the world, flexible, willing to integrate new pieces of information. Leading function or the hero, not so flexible, all right, but is constantly on, is this main source of a person's confidence and is the function that you that a human being embodies okay as opposed to just using it in a utilitarian sense because this leading function is constantly on regardless of the reward of any external reward okay so let's do a quick summary before we finish today's lecture model a is a model created by Ashra, the economist and psychologist who uh, first created uh, socionics. Model A is classical socionics. Model A is comprised of eight cells in four rows. Each row is called a block and has specific behavior and characteristics and purpose in developing the person's personality. The ego block, which is what we're learning about today, is the area of conscious competence and active influence upon the world. This is where you get your inner sense of I or who you are as a person. And these functions, all right, the two functions within it have endless amounts of energy. Now, the two functions in it are called the leading or hero, as MBTI people will call it, and the creative or parent, as MBTI people will call it. The leading function is rigid, a source of a person's identity, most of all, more so than the creative. It's what the person embodies. It's what the person uses to individuate and distinguish themselves from other people. It's not flexible and integrates new information slowly after prolonged periods of time. Satisfaction is drawn from use of this function regardless of external reward. The creative or parent function, as MBTI people call it, is the helper. It's the function you use to help other people and yourself as well, and is your main channel of contribution towards others. This function is integrative, as in it's flexible and willing to integrate new pieces of information, actively expresses itself, gains others' attention, and is selectively displayed. All right. And yeah, so that concludes this uh, lecture. Please make sure you like, share, and subscribe. Leave a comment if you want to do that. Hey guys, so I'm back again with another lecture for you guys. Uh, this time we're going to be continuing Model A, and we're going to be looking at the super equal block. All right, this is the second row of Model A. The super equal block contains two functions within it, and that's the polar, or what people know as a trickster, and the role or people from John B.B. know as the demon. Now, what you'll notice here is that it goes from function one to two, but it jumps and goes from seven to eight in terms of MBTI, all right? Function three and four 
its oceanics are function seven and eight. Okay. Now the super ego block. Okay. Now what does this do? This block is known as the block of social control and constitutes aspects of life that other people demand that they fill. So this is the aspect of life that you feel as though other people demand that you provide in that area, but you're not able to. Okay. This block is weak and unvalued. We seek external feedback on performance of this block. It absorbs all information at the same time, showing subpar differentiation of information. All right, it's not able to, it's not sophisticated enough to apply any form of discernment. So let's take a look at the polar function, or what John B. B. would say as a trickster, and go in, de in depth before going into and moving on to the role slash demon. All right, the polar, the information metabolism and element in this function causes us the most pain and frustration in use and is constantly switch off. All right, this is the trickster. This is the one that you don't want to use, even though people say that you should be using it, but it's like you, uh, you don't know how to and you don't really care much to learn how to. Information received is either too exaggerated or too underestimated in terms of its importance. All right, that's key here. So the trickster function right it doesn't just trick you into making you think that it's not important oh i don't need to use this function it doesn't matter but it can also trick you by making you think that it's super important to develop all right so that's why you get these uh, moments like a person will try to use their trickster function because they think that they absolutely have to in order to succeed in this situation but um, they set themselves up for failure by trying to use it all right it's interesting because some people in the MBTI sphere will spread the idea that you need to master your trickster function or whatever, or that you need to learn how to use it. But the thing is, you can't use it. And sometimes it's best just not to even try. It's best instead the strategy you should be using is uh, to try to implement some sort of, um, how can I say, um, tactics in order to mitigate against severe risks that come from this function. Success in this function is heavily valued by the individual. All right, now that's key here. That's key. Despite you not being good at it and it being constantly switched off, when you do achieve success in it, it's extremely valuable that you have achieved some sort of uh, success in it. All right, it's something that people want to be good at, but sometimes they just really suck at. But then, so they realize how bad they are at it, so then they decide to switch it off. And in some situations, it sabotages you by making you think either it's not important to know or it's super important to know. All right. Now, let's take a look at the role function or the demon function. Now, this is the if you notice the polar slash trickster in socionics is quite similar to how John Beebe describes it. But the role and the demon is quite different. And I really do think that um, soci uh, socionics got it better. I uh, got it right here all right so it's a flexible all right it's flexible but weak function that a is the leading and creative when they are not sufficient all right that's interesting here so when your hero or your parent is not sufficient to succeed in a situation your role function actually comes out and supports that's why people can actually use the role slash demon function even though in like the john bb uh, model it's placed as the eighth function lower than the polar it's technically not lower you can actually use this function unlike the polar all right and you will see this function quite a lot actually people will actually be able to use it can be switched on in situations that are completely new to absorb new information usually pressured by the environment all right prolonged focus leads to discomfort and exhaustion yet people feel the desire to show others they are up to standard in this function use all right so you, this is the area where you don't like doing it. You're not that good at it, but when you absolutely need to and must, and when your hero and your creative have failed, this is where the function will come out. All right. And you like to show others that you are up to standard in being able to use this function. Okay. So yeah, this was a short one. Um, if you enjoyed this video series, right, make sure you like, share, subscribe, leave a comment. Hey everybody, so I'm back again with another lecture here. We're going to be continuing the uh, Model A series. 
if this is your first time stumbling across this channel and uh, you've just picked this video just to let you know this is a uh, part of a course that i'm doing and this is like the middle of it so if you want to learn more about socionics i highly recommend going to the uh first episode of the series here and start from there in order to catch up because uh this is cumulative and everything that this course is on is built upon the previous uh lectures okay so yeah anyways without further ado let's just jump right into it we're going to be looking at the uh, super id block of model a that's the third row and this block contains the mobilizing or what people would call in john bb's terms the child function and the suggestive or what people will call in john bb the inferior function so let's break it down uh, let's take a look at the entire block analyze it and understand what it does and what its purpose is this block contains weak yet valued functions and is often referred to as the child block so unlike john bb's uh, model where just one function is known as the child the, the the child and the inferior together are known as the child function okay child block sorry actively consumes information in this block and provokes others to provide information in this block poorly discerns information and overly trusts others guidance is needed in this area and is valued therefore outsourced to others on how to handle this block lack of adequate support leads to blaming others and a withdrawal from society so let's simplify this uh, so you guys can basically what this means is this is the area we outsource we care about this place we value it but we know we're not really that good so we outsource it to others and we have this hidden expectation that others will help and guide us in this area and when they don't we feel disappointed in them so now let's break down the individual functions let's start off with the mobilizing or the child function so the theme here behind the mobilizing function is overestimation this is where we assume that we are much better and more capable than we actually are and this leads us to biting off more than we can chew and we eventually stumble and fall and embarrass ourselves all right the function receives partial critical assessment it's bold and it's inflexible just like the hero function this is where people bite off more than they can chew activity level depends on the external support of others if present can even surpass others in this function's use and this function takes criticism very badly all right now let's take a look at the suggestive slash inferior now the theme here is vulnerability to manipulation this is where people are easily suggestible all right like a person can come to you and suggest you do something in this area and you'll easily do it basically okay this function is weak but flexible all right weak but flexible the weakest function along with the polar but unlike the polar does not cause pain tiredness and other negative emotions because this function is still valued now i'm going to get into what is valued versus unvalued functions later that's a dichotomy and that's a function dichotomy which is going to be explained about later down the line but this is valued as the individual scenes the information relate in this in these areas conducive to the goal of the leading function okay so we tend to view um the information here as helpful to whatever aims our leading function has there is still a passive attitude towards it and a need for others to support you in advice given in this area is gladly received but it is very also tolerant of criticism unlike the child function so let's do a quick summary all right the super id block this is the area that we outsource to others but we value it and we have this sort of hidden expectation that others are going to help us in and we're disappointed when they don't but summarize the mobilizing function the area of overestimation of our capabilities bold and inflexible taking criticism badly but over time we can actually develop this function and get better at it suggestive this is the area of, of vulnerability to manipulation and this is where we're easily suggestible by others it is weak but flexible and is very tolerant of criticism and advice and support in this area is glad is always well appreciated all right we gladly seek support and advice in this area so anyways guys that concludes the video all right if you enjoyed this and found uh, derived some value from it and gave you a better understanding of socionics please make sure you like share and subscribe and um
All right, guys, so we got another lecture today and we're going to be continuing the Model A series. And this time we're going to be finalizing it with the last and final row, or otherwise known as the block, which is called the it block. Now, the it block contains two functions, all right, just like all the other blocks. And that's the ignoring or what John BB people will call the nemesis and the demonstrative, what John BB people will call the critic. So let's break it down and get into the overall behavior and characteristics of this entire block here. This block of functions is strong yet unvalued. This is known as the area of passive skills. These functions are mainly used for prevention of unwanted and negative circumstances as opposed to active self-development. All right. The main function of this block is the satisfaction of base level needs, survival for self and others. Constantly on the aspects of this block requires placing restrictions on one's ego block. Constant self-scrutiny, self-criticism, therefore usually avoided altogether. All right, so simplified. All right, what does this actually mean? What it basically means is this block, you're really good at it. You know how to use it. You're very strong, but you don't really value it or care about it that much. All right, and you mainly use this these uh, functions here in a negative way. All right, to talk about things you should not do: don't do this, don't do that. Let's avoid this, on, uh, and doing whatever you can to avoid unwanted negative circumstances. All right, now the more you use this block, the less you're able to use your um, ego block, which is the leading and the creative. All right, so they're basically antithetical to one another. But at the same time, they can be used when integrated to support the ego block, all right? And I'm going to get into that now. So let's take a look at the ignoring function, Nemesis, first, and in depth. Uh, this is a strong function, mainly used at telling others what not to do, hence it is called the limiting function, all right? Excessive use of this function is seen as boring, not needed, and at a, and at a time frustrating. Individual typically omits information relayed on this aspect. As with all vital functions, use is directed at here and now moments and not global event moments, all right? Here and now moments instead of global moments. Now, the vital uh, function is basically a function dichotomy. That's not within the scope of this video. I'm going to be getting into that later. Uh, that's in the function dichotomy episode. But anyways, so you can just ignore this actually. So basically the nemesis function, it's the area we, where we set limits to ourselves and other people, all right? But the nemesis can, or the ignoring function can be used to actually support the leading function when needed, all right? It's, it's, like, it's like switched off the same way the polar slash trickster function is, but it's actually much more potent and more powerful than the trickster function, all right? And it can be used just, like I said, to support the nemesis function, uh, the hero leading function. And now let's take a look at the demonstrative function, all right, which is known as the critic function. Now, if you notice, as a John BB essentially called the critic function the limiting function, but here it's the ignoring that's the limiting. But even more accurately, it's both. Both functions are used to limit and to uh, tell people what not to do, all right, to avoid negative circumstances sometimes. Now, it takes a silent, now the demonstrative takes a silent action to prevent negative situations instead of openly telling people what to do or what to avoid. All right, so this is this is a background function. It's more behind the scenes. Regardless of its orientation, if it's external or internal, it's gonna be behind the scenes. It's gonna be silently avoiding negative situations without making a big deal out of it. This function is the strongest along with the leading function, yet not valued. So the individual will seek to not speak too much about this function and direct the conversation to more valued functions. And that's also extremely crucial and that's key here. The demonstrative, slash critic function is just as powerful, just as powerful as the hero function. All right. It's just as powerful as it. The only difference is, is that you don't like to use it as much. All right. So it's, it's interesting because for example, when you break down an ILE, we NTP, right? Their extroverted thinking is in the spot of the demonstrative and it's actually more powerful than their introverted thinking. All right, TI logic, but they don't bird as much. All right, they don't like to use TE as much as I like to use TI. So that's interesting here. Okay, so before we end this video, let's um, summarize everything that we learned. All right, the ignoring the 
All right, so before we end off this video, let me just summarize everything. Uh, the id block is a block that contains two functions within it. These two functions are strong, but yet unvalued. We use these functions mainly in a negative way to tell people what not to do or how to avoid negative circumstances. The main function of this block is a satisfaction, satisfaction of basic level needs, survival for self and others. And the more you use this function, the less of your ego block are you able to use unless you integrate it to support your ego block. Now we've got the ignoring. Let's break it down further. Let's summarize ignoring and demonstrative. The ignoring is basically much more open, all right? It is not behind the scenes like the demonstrative slash creative. When it tells people what not to do, it does it in a very overt way, basically. Excessive use of this function is seen as boring, not needed, and at times frustrating. All right. And then we have the demonstrative, which is it does the same thing that the ignoring function does, all right, to avoid negative circumstances, but the approach it takes is a more silent approach behind the scenes, silently avoiding negative situations instead of te openly telling people what to do or what to avoid. This function is the strongest along with the leading function, yet not valued, so the individual will seek to not speak too much about this function and direct the conversation to more valued functions. All right, guys, so that about does it for this video. Uh, if you like this video, you found it extremely valuable and helpful and useful, make sure you like, share, and subscribe. All right, guys, so in this lecture, I'm going to be breaking down the uh, function dichotomies. So to get an understanding of what the function dichotomies really are, they're just dichotomies we use in order to get a further and deeper understanding of each of the functions and different function pairings, all right? So this is going to be a little bit more in depth, all right, but I'm going to try to go slowly and also I'm going to try to simplify everything as I go along, all right? So let's start with the first dichotomy, which is the mental versus the vital. All right, the mental functions are functions one, two, three, and four, all right, which are functions two, three, Right here, one, two, three, and four. That's the ego block and the super ego block. Now, if this is your first time stumbling across this video and you don't know what the ego blocks block are or any of these blocks are, what these functions are, watch my previous videos, all right? This series is titled Socionic Simplified. There, it's, part, it's a course with a bunch of different videos and the uh, previous videos will explain everything and teach you everything you need to know about the functions, all right? The blocks, the ego block, super ego block, and model A as a whole. But anyways, so now that we have model A and we've understood it, all right, we're going to look at the function dichotomies and the mental versus vital function. The mental functions are functions one, two, three, and four, right here, one, two, three, and four. That's the ego and super ego block. The information in these elements are the ones we seek to verbalize and articulate to the world. They are the I am that form the basis of our intellectual activity. All right. This is interesting. This is actually quite interesting because, well, we know that the, okay, so the ego block being a function we seek to verbalize and articulate to the world. Sure. Yeah. I mean, of course, right. It's, it's, those are the two functions that we uh, use to interact with the world and it's our sense of identity. But... Functions three and four, which in MBTI terms is, uh, or should I say, John Beebe terms is the demon and trickster. Now that's interesting, all right? So people try to communicate their demon and trickster to other people as well. All right, interesting. So now let's take a look at the function, the vital functions. Those are functions five, six, seven, and eight, all right? That's the super id block and the id block. The information in these functions are the ones that express themselves involuntarily without words in the process of doing things and exist as unexpected sentiments. So basically, these are the functions that sort of just happen to you, basically. All right. They pop up out of nowhere. They happen to you. Uh, so, for example, if you have FI, all right, I'll use myself as example. FI, mine is uh, in the sixth function, which is mobilizing, which is child. All right. I experience my own personal sentiments or what I like. I find things that I care about personally randomly. All right. I don't consciously go and try to develop my FI or communicate that to other people. It's just something that I sort of discover along the way. 
which is interesting, all right? Now, that's the mental versus the vital, all right? Now let's take a look at another function, another dichotomy, set of dichotomies here, right? We've got total, we're gonna have uh, one, two, three, all right? Three different dichotomies. Let's take a look at accepting versus producing, accepting. Accepting functions, accepting functions are the ones that come first in each block of model A. So what does that mean? That's one, the first one's leading. In the super ego block, the first one that comes is the role demon because it's the third function. So it's one and then three and then five. Okay, it's suggestive because in the super id block, the first one is the fifth one that comes before six. So it's suggestive. And then the id block is the ignoring, which is the seventh, because seven comes before eight, all right? So it's, so go back again, these functions, all right? The accepting functions are functions one, which is the leading slash hero, functions three, which is the role slash demon, function five, which is the suggestive slash inferior, and function seven, which is the ignoring slash nemesis. These are what are termed as the accepting functions. Now, what does this mean? Ashra suggests that the functions that are accepting are used to form our image of reality. All right. So we understand the world through those functions and that's how we form our image. Now, let's take a look at the producing. These come second. All right. So it's just everything that's so come second. That's going to be the creative. All right. Slash parent. The polar slash trickster. The mobilizing slash child and the demonstrative slash critic. Now, model A, these functions are used to create a new product based on understanding of reality formed by the accepting functions. So first, you comprehend reality, you understand the way the world works, and then from, from that sort of input, there's an output. That's why it's called producing. You produce an output or you create a new product and based on the understanding. So yeah, that's how it goes. You can think about, it, I guess, in terms of input output, accepting is what you're willing to input into your psyche. And then the producing is the output, what you produce or create as a result. All right. Let me go now. Let's go on to the contact versus inert. Now this is quite a lot, right? Okay, but no, no worries. We're gonna break it down. Okay. Contact functions. These are functions two, three, five and eight. All right, two, which is the creative slash parent, three, the role slash demon, five, suggestive slash inferior, and eight, demonstrative slash critic. So it's basically the right column. All right, there are two columns in model A. Everything, uh, wait, let me just get something pen right here, real quick. This entire column, oops, sorry, my bad. This right here. This entire column right here. These are what is known as the contact functions. C, I'm going to put C-O-N, okay, just to write the whole thing. Whatever. Contact functions, all right? So these functions are how we touch upon our environment. It's room for improvement and growth through practice or new insights. So these functions, right, we can grow in them. And we can, these are the way that we mainly uh, touch upon the environment and communicate with other people. Functions two and three are part of the mental ring. Now, if you notice, all right, the mental ring is the very first dichotomy that we looked at. And now we're starting to get into overlap. That's another interesting thing is that certain functions will contain certain, uh, more than one dichotomy, all right, in it. Okay. So now we're going to see some overlap here. Functions two or three are part of the mental ring. And we've already talked about the mental ring. All right. The mental ring. And now create a function, which is a second function, produces new information from what is accepted by the base. All right. Now, if we go back to accepting versus producing dichotomy, if we take a look now. The accepting functions come first in each block of the model. All right. So this block, the first one is a leading. The second one is always going to be a producing. The creative function produces new information from what is accepted by the base because the base is an accepting function. It comes first in the block where the creative comes second. 
All right, so you're starting to notice how everything is being, uh, it's everything builds upon the, uh, the previous concept. It's like building blocks, all right? Everything's being built up together. And there's a, there's a very interesting interplay between the different functions, all right? Now, the creative function, it's how we uniquely make contact with the world and serves as our connection to reality, as a potential for conscious growth, all right? Now, uh, in one of my previous lectures in this series, in Socionics Simplified, where I talked about the creative function, I talked about how, in Socionics, the creative function is seen as the main channel of contribution to the world, and even in Dr. John Beebe's work, it's seen that way as well. So... Let's now go on to the role function, which is information from the environment is situationally accepted. Does not grow in strength, but individual growth, they, they individually grow their understanding of the that aspect of reality. So the role, which is the third function, which is an accepting function instead of producing, which is also known as the demon function in John Beebe, um, this function accepts information situationally now, it's used to enhance your understanding, as in you can grow your understanding in that aspect of reality. So, for example, if you have FE role, you can improve your understanding of the FE aspect of reality, but the function in of itself does not get any stronger, more competent, basically. All right? So you're not going to get better at using FE, but you are better at noticing FE-related information. Now, let's take a look at functions 5 and 8. Now, these are part of the vital ring, all right? Now, mental versus vital dichotomy, the very first dichotomy, we got the vital. All right, five and eight are part of the vital ring. Now, strive to unconsciously make contact with the environment, especially true of the suggestive, as information in that function supports the leading function and is theoretically the only way to improve the leading. All right, now this is very interesting. <clears throat> so, in, like, the only way you can improve your hero is by improving your suggestive, which is your inferior. All right, you can actually improve the suggestive function and develop it with age and with time. And sometimes when you work so hard to improve your suggestive function, right, people might confuse you for having your suggestive function in a higher position. For example, the best example is Arnold Schwarzenegger. And I do insist that he is SE suggestive. Believe it or not, he's actually an ILI. He's not an SE base or SE mobilizing. But because he improved his um se right which is a suggestive function which can be improved it's a contact function it's part of the vital ring it can improve you can grow in this area because of that people sometimes mistake him for being se lead all right or having se higher than the uh f than the uh than the suggestive function position all right and another thing is, is that he often says that how working, how exercising and working out helps him develop his vision better. And honestly, this is true, like throughout, like whoever you analyze, whoever you take a look at, whoever you study, right? And you can try this yourself. Once you identify your suggestive function, you can actually then start to see growth and development in your leading function. All right. And here it's theoretically the only way to improve the leading function. Now let's take a look at the demonstrator function, all right, uh, function eight, which is a critic in John Beebe's uh, model, works with the leading function to produce one's unique world view, all right? That's what the demonstrative does. Your unique world view is gonna come from your critic function when it works with your hero. All right, that's contact versus inert. Now let's take a look at the inert functions. These are functions one, four, six, and seven, all right? One, the leading, four, so it's basically everything right here on the left column, inert. All right? One, four, six, and seven. Now, these functions do not integrate information from the environment. Strength remains fixed and does not seek help in use in these functions and is the core of an individual's strength and weakness, all right? These functions, they're inflexible, a little bit more stiff. Uh, they don't, they're not open to new information in that area, all right? So for example, one way you can tell the difference between an ILI, and an, which is INTJ or LIE INTJ, is that the ILI will have FI, all right, in mobilizing. 
the sixth function, which is a child function. And so their idea of what is good or bad, right and wrong, these personal sentiments and moral judgments for the ILI is very stiff. All right, it's stubborn. They don't. They're not. E they're not going to change their opinion on what is the good thing to do, what is the wrong thing to do. Whereas the LIE is a lot because they have it in their suggestive right here, and its contact function is a lot more flexible. All right, with what they believe is good, what they believe is bad. You know, they can they can deal with interact with people who they don't necessarily agree with morally a, a bit better than the uh, ILI. Because the ILI is kind of stubborn in that regard. So, um, functions one and four, all right, are part of the verbal functions. A person's greatest strength, which is their leading, and their greatest weakness, their polar. All right, so function one and four, the, the strongest function and the weakest function together, but both of them, you're trying to communicate to other people because they're part of the verbal function. Inert functions, 6 and 7, are part of the vital ring. person is hardly aware of these functions and how they are used. All right? So that's function 6 and 7 right here. That's mobilizing and ignoring. All right? That's the child and the nemesis. All right? Function. These are the functions we are hardly aware of how these functions are used. All right? So we have them, but we're not exactly sure how they're being used. Now, the function uh, six mobilizing is inert at its main purpose, as its main purpose is to mobilize the creative function into action. Now, this is also key. This is pretty interesting, all right? There's a reason why the f uh, f mobilizing co function is called the mobilizing, all right? This is how you get your creative function to act. So, for example, if you come from the personality hacker community or anybody else, right, a common idea that is spread around is that in order to develop and mature, you need to develop your auxiliary function, your parent function. All right, you need to avoid your your your, your child function. Stop indulging in that tertiary. Don't get into that cognitive loop. All right, because it, it takes it robs you of your health and development. Now here's the thing, in socionics, I, and and I can tell you now from experience, this is actually true. The way to improve your creative slash parent function is by working on your mobilizing because that function, the mobilizing slash child, is what gets your creative function into action. All right. So if you experience that you're not using your auxiliary slash parent to its full capabilities, it's not that you're not using your, your creative function well enough. It's that you're not using your mobilizing slash child function enough. All right, because that's the thing that gets this to spring into action. All right. So, yeah. Now, let's t last, not least, function seven, which is the ignoring, uh, which is the nemesis, is inert because it is a natural strength like the base, but conscious information is limiting, limited in favor of the base. Let's summarize the mental versus vital ring. Mental ring, that's function one, two, three, and four. That's the ego and superego block right here, the first two rows of model A. These functions are the ones we seek to verbalize and articulate to the world. Vital, these functions are the ones that express themselves involuntarily. Now, what are the vital? Those are functions five, six, seven, and eight, which is super it block and it block. Accepting versus producing. Accepting functions come first in each block and in terms of the number, all right? with the first uh, function. So look at the number here. Um, the accepting accepts information. All right. The producing produces information from what is accepted from each block. So the leading comes first. So therefore, it's an accepting function. And the creative comes second. Therefore, it's producing. So the creative produces out of the information that is accepted by the leading function. OK. The role slash demon is third and the trickster is fourth. So the role is accepting, but situationally because it's weak. And whatever is accepted here, information, gets produced by the trickster function. All right. So that's how the accepting producing works.
producing is all about creating a new product based on understanding of reality, whereas accepting forms our image of reality. Let's take a look at contact versus inert. Contact. <coughs> The contact functions, which are, which is all the functions, all right, on the right column right here. So that's functions two, three, five, and eight are how we make contact with the world. These functions are flexible. Okay, we use them to absorb new information. The inert are in the left column right here. These contacts are, these functions are inflexible. All right, and they don't change, but they form the core of the person's strength and weakness. All right, creative function is our, it's, it's how we uniquely make contact with the world. The role function, situationally accepted, does not grow in strength, but individual growth grows their understanding of that aspect of reality. Five and eight, strive to unconsciously make contact with the environment. Especially five, because information in that function supports the leading function, where eight which is the demonstrator function works with the leading function to produce one's unique worldview. Now for the inert, <clears throat> one and four, part of the verbal functions. So we seek to communicate these while inert functions six and seven are part of the vital ring. Person is hardly aware of how these functions are used. The mobilizing slash child's main purpose is to mobilize the creative into action, whereas function seven is inert, is a natural strength but limited because in favor of the base basically all right so yeah that about does it for this video uh, if you guys found this extremely helpful and useful please make sure you like share subscribe all right guys so we got another lecture here uh, we're going to be talking about the function dichotomies so yeah let's just jump right down to it strong versus weak all right, this is another function dichotomy. The strong functions, the ego and the id block. All right, that's the first row right here and the last row right here. Function one, two, seven, and eight. These are considered strong functions. All right, sophisticated understanding of information used for the benefit of self and others. Weak functions, those are the super ego and super id. Those are functions rows two, two and three, functions three, four, five, and six. All right, they're they oversimplify data, look for outside help, and can't reach conclusions on their own, basically. All right? Now, bold versus cautious. Bold. Functions that are used freely. In extroverts, all extroverted functions are bold, even the weaker, more subdued ones, and vice versa for the introverts. This can often make it seem that subdued functions are preferred more than valued functions. All right? So, yeah, the bold functions, those are the things that really pop out for you. Okay? Uh, yeah, then we have cautious functions used when with great care and therefore much more sensitive to criticism, especially applies to the vulnerable function. All right, uh, that therefore these. Uh, so if you're an extrovert, your introverted functions are very cautious. You're very careful with the way that you use those functions and vice versa for extroverts. All right. So I think everything here is so far straightforward. All right. Bold is just think of an image of a person of what shows itself you know it's confident or cautious is a little bit more calculated and careful maybe even a little bit more meticulous in nature all right then we have the verbal versus nonverbal verbal known as discursive and or overvalued all right these functions belong to the ego and the super id block all right so this is your top four functions in the uh, John BB model all right or the MBTI sense it's your four functions all right Okay, because it's super super id block, which is mobilizing slash child and suggestive slash inferior. Then we have, all right, provide active exchange of information between people. Information on these functions is easily discussed with others, tends to self-development. All right, these are the areas in th life. These are the functions that we try to develop and work on, most of all. Nonverbal, known as working cooperative, belong to the super ego and it block. This is basically what the John BB people will call your shadow. Information is non negotiable, prefers help through actions, activities limited to immediate needs of society. Now let's take a look at exterior versus interior. Exterior, known as constant functions, functions 1, 3, 6, and 8. That's here. 1, 
leading three the role slash demon, six the child slash mobilizing, and eight the demonstrative creative. Uh, sorry, demonstrative and critic. Uh, they're accepting functions of mental ring and producing functions of the vital ring. All right. So th this is talking about the overlap again. Symbols are all one color. Okay, this is just talking about the way that it's denoted. We view the aspects of this world to be constant and part of the essence of the world. We seek to leave them as they are. External changes are perceived as something inevitable but not characteristics. All right. So let's let's take uh, an example of an ILI, INTJ. One, the hero function, that's NI, SI, FI, and TI. All right. Those functions are seen as aspects of the world that are constant and part of the essence of the world. Okay. Uh, and then let's take a look at uh, the interior, known as variable functions, functions 2, 4, 5, and 7. So that's 2, the creative slash parent, 4, the polar slash trickster, 5, suggestive slash inferior, 7, ignoring slash nemesis. Okay. They are the producing functions of the mental ring and accepting functions of the vital ring. Now, this is, again, more overlap. Okay. So, tend to see aspects of their elements that need to change, actively influencing the world or passively accepting it. And so, back to the ILI case, all right, that'll be the extroverted thinking, creative, or slash parent. Uh, it'll be their FE, polar. It'll be their SE suggestive, inferior, and it'll be their ignoring with nemesis, which is NE. All right, so T E F E S E N E is an area that is constantly changing. Aspects of uh, this element need to change, and they actively influence this upon the world. All right, now, now we have right here. Let me move this. Okay, so I can talk about it. Uh, let me bring it closer. Then we have the uh, final, the last and final function right here, dichotomy. Now this one's a little bit in depth, all right, but no worries, we're gonna slow down. The other ones were quite straightforward and easy, but this one, uh, we're gonna have to slow this down a little bit. I'm gonna make sure I simplify it for you guys. Evaluatory versus situational. Evaluatory. Uh, strongest and weakest functions are considered evaluatory. That's the functions one and eight, that's the hero and critic, and weakest functions four and five, that's the polar and the, the suggestive, which is inferior. Now, this breaks down into two further uh, components, which is accepting and producing. So, if you remember in the, one of the previous dichotomies, accepting, producing, accepting functions, take in information, and producing functions produce out of the information that has been received. All right, the accepting function is the first function in each of the row. So again, in the uh, super ego block, the second row, the first function, because it's the third, is gonna be the role, and then the fourth one, all right? This time you're reading it from right to left, so that can get a little bit confusing, but just make, make sure you make a mental note of that. Four, all right, function four is the polar trickster. So the role slash demon takes in information, and then the trickster is supposed to output some sort of product. All right. Now, in this case, we're going to look at accepting. Evaluatory functions, especially leading and suggestive, are valued. Information is taken seriously as they compose the center of someone's personality. All right, that's the leading. That's so that's the hero and the inferior. So if you're NI Dom, that would be your NI and SE. If you're TI Dom, that'd be your TI and your FE. These information here is taken very seriously and it composes the center of somebody's personality. Leading function makes up center of a person's evaluation and judgments. That's the hero, all right, where the suggestive slash inferior seeks to make contact with the environment to develop, all right? So we are always trying to develop our suggestive slash inferior function by making contact with the world. Okay, then we've got producing. Evaluatory functions are subdued by the individual. Evaluations made here are done by subdued accepting functions when valued and accepting functions are not able to process information, especially true of the vulnerable function, which is the polar. Demonstrative function, all right, that's the trick, that's the critic. Evaluates are produ evaluations are, are produced in favor of one's creative functions. 
All right. So it is taken less seriously, even though an individual is quite sophisticated in that area. So basically what this means is in the id block, ignoring the nemesis function takes information, the demonstrative produces a product. But what the product that's produced here is not as valued as the creative because the creative is also a, pro a producing function. The creative also takes information from the leading, all right? So that's basically it. That's it simplified. Situational. Access on a case-by-case -case scenario. All right, now this is the second dichotomy, all right? The, this is these are functions three and seven, two and six, all right? Three and seven is the role slash demon and then your nemesis and your creative and your child. Now these functions are accessed on a case-by-case -case basis, all right? Accept, accepting situational. Now we're gonna look at the situational functions that are accepting, as in these are the ones that come first in their block. So it's gonna be the third function, which is the role and demon, and seventh is gonna be ignoring, okay? Because these come first, so they accept information. All right, now a lot of this really builds on the previous videos, so if you're not sure about what's going on here, Please make sure you watch the previous videos to understand, all right? This is a cumulative course, basically. So, yeah. Where the information can't be valued by one's... Accepts information only in the case where the information can't be evaluated by one's valued and accepting function. So, if my valued... So, if my valued function that I... If I have a function that I value but it also falls on the accepting and it can't evaluate the information, then I move into using my daemon function or the role function and the ignoring or nemesis functions, what PP people will call the nemesis function. Okay. Now, where was I? In the role function, information can be accepted consciously, but is subdued as it opposes the leading function. Role is seen as a contact function, so it is seen as somewhat important. The ignoring function information is accepted in a situational basis, but is ignored mainly as it conflicts with the leading function. All right, so basically we are neglecting uh, using these accepting functions in favor of other ones. Information is ignored in this area and instead accepted by one's suggestive. All right, so instead of we, we ignore our nemesis slash ignoring function, in favor of our suggestive. So if I'm an ILI, that means I ignore any related information in favor of SE related information. Because at the end of the day, I value my SE more than my NE. I've, even though it's weaker and it's a suggestive, but I just value it more. Now let's take a look at, uh, what else, ignore function? Yeah, last, we're almost, we're done here, producing slash situational function. Functions two and six, situational as they produce information accepted by our valued evaluatory functions. Creative function produces strong valued information that must make contact with the environment for the ego to be heard. All right, this is why the creative function is known as the main co channel contribution and your main way of connecting to others. New information is only produced when leading function accepts information. Mobilizing function is inert. Weak and valued. Information here is not well understood yet, but serves as a driver for the creative function. All right. So, anyways, guys, this concludes uh, this uh, this lecture. 